All right. Good morning, Jenny. How are you? Good morning, Alicia. I am good. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody that's listening. I'm Alicia. Um, I am at Calico Art Center in Kalispell, Montana. And we have Jenny Bevel with us this morning. Um, we're going to be talking to her and also five artists who are participating in our inaugural exhibition here at Calico. We're so excited to have a group of strong women leading our first ever show in this space. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're doing it during, you know, COVID-19. And that's part of what we want to talk about and share about this process is how does exhibitions look during this time? How does creating art during this time look and feel? So I'm here to ask Jenny some questions this morning. But first, will you tell us a little bit about yourself, Jenny? Um, sure. I am um, relatively new to Montana. I came out here in 2014 um, from New York City, where I had spent 25 years working in museums, community centers, public schools, um, basically anywhere you could get a job teaching art, I've been there. Um, and so I spent the last 10 years of my time in New York, I was a teaching artist and a teacher mentor at the Guggenheim Museum. And when I came out to Montana, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, I was lucky enough to get a position at the Missoula Art Museum. So I work there part time. Um, and I also um, do workshops for Humanities Montana. And I have my own business, Happy Heart Teachers, um, which is a teacher mentorship um, online program. So when I got out here, I in, at, at the art, at the Missoula Art Museum, I'm the educator and outreach specialist. So I'm not a curator in that um, job, but um, you know I've always loved curation, and I've always kind of um, been the beneficiary as an educator of wonderful curation and as an artist. And so now I'm kind of like, I guess, one of those actors who wants to direct. So <laughs> now I'm stepping into that role. So in 2018, I brought a project to um, the Flathead Valley called The Scream Room, which was a multidisciplinary art piece by a friend, an artist from Brooklyn, Kylan O'Brien. And I didn't really even realize what I was doing was curation. Um, and then I went from there to... Um, curating a show, an exhibition in Whitefish that I was a participating artist in called Sacred Contracts. And through both of those projects, I met this group of women who are um, the artists for the inaugural exhibition at Calico. So I'm super excited. They came to me and were kind of like, you know, do you want to be involved? And I said, you know, I really do want to be involved, but not as an artist, but as the curator. And so they were pretty excited and it, it's been an amazing collaboration. I'm so excited to hear more. Um, one of my first questions is, let's tell people what a curator does and why it's important, just for people who may not know and understand what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it is sometimes kind of hard to understand because the curator, if they do their job well, the spotlight is really not on the curator. The spotlight is on the artist. So um, I kind of got my... Um, my idea of curation from, you know, being the recipient of great curation. So I feel like to me, it's kind of like there are three parts. There's the artist whose vision we want to amplify and elevate. There's the institution, which in this case is Calico, a community arts center that's just, you know, taking flight in our community and, and serving a need that really is a need that has not been addressed in the community. So we really wanna help support that. And then um, the public, you know, everybody who's gonna come through the doors and receive this art and participate in this art. So I see my job as kind of being the person who has eyes on all three of those needs and, and is creating connection and access between all three of them. I love that. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you might approach it differently than maybe in a traditional setting? Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots, yeah, there's lots of ways to curate. You know, for instance, with the screen room, basically all I did, <clears throat> excuse me, was love the project, want it to come to our community and reach out to the artist and figure out how financially, logistically, and aesthetically to make that happen. So that on a basic level, there's some organizational parts. 
Um, and traditionally, a lot of curation is sort of about choosing and caring for and creating this um, experience. But in um, 2019, I went to Seattle and I saw this exhibition there that sort of changed everything for me. And it really resonated. It was called Yehaw. Um, and it was a group that Yeha is a collective, an indigenous artists collective. And they had curated an exhibition where there was no jury, there was no choosing, there was no hierarchy, there was no, um, you know, there was none of that critical art exclusivity that I really hate. You know, like, I mean, I came up in community centers, I came up in public schools, like it's all about access. So I don't really like the art story where there's like, you have to know special language and there's like a short, I'm not about that. And yeah. so when I saw that exhibition, I was like, wow, here's an exhibition where if you want in, you're in. And then it's up to the curation, up to the, the leadership to mentor you if you need mentoring, to help, you know, create these connections. So when I was um, approached, yeah, so when I was approached by um, the women in this group, I was like, okay, here's what I would love to do. I'm not going to give you a theme. I'm not going to be heavy handed. I'm not like, let's just, you go do what you do and let's just meet monthly, periodically, as much as we can, share things via social media, which has become way more important right now than it even was before. And we just kind of are, have, we all have eyes on what everybody's doing. And it's just this kind of um, cross pollination um, and supportive atmosphere that is just, it's just been amazing. Wow. Okay, so a couple of questions come to mind right off the bat um, in hearing about that process. One, how did the artists react to working in, a, in an unconstrained environment like you created for them? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's been really interesting because some are like, oh, hell yeah. You know, some of them are just like super happy and some of them are like, mm -hmm. you know, like, but what's the, what's the job, you know, what's the theme? So we've, we've just like, my job is kind of like to hold steady and to give them confidence, you know, you know what you need to be doing. And with the ones who are like, you know, super great, you know, super happy and explore, exploding their creativity. It's my job to keep saying, you know, in the end, I'm going to be the last decider, you know? So it's like, everybody's making what they want to make. All the pieces are coming together in this kind of Google doc that we have of images. And then in the end, it's my job to look at the space and see how the works will dialogue with each other and pick the ones that, you know, are having this conversation. So they, they understand that, that it's going to like the final decision will be the final responsibility for picking will be mine because I'm the only one who's got eyes on the whole because it's a group show. So, right. yeah. Um, how did you come up with a theme? I mean, because you didn't do a traditional um, call or, or, or yeah. I mean, how did that theme evolve for you guys? Well, it's funny. It was evolving. You know, we, we would get together and we would just talk and, um, I would sort of reflect back what I thought we were talking about. So I would give them, you know, I gave them a couple of different themes over the last six months. I'm like, how about this? You know, and I'd write a little thing and they'd be like, well, yeah, no, you know, so it, it was evolving. And, you know, because we're, we're like trying to get you a proposal and, and the proposal's not coming because it keeps changing. Um, but when, um, when quarantine happened, it kind of felt like a door, um, you know, closing a little bit on that freewheeling aspect of it and we needed to decide um so we had like a, an emergency meeting and we just did a quick brainstorm and we just decided and so um anyway so now our title is quarantine dreams and um everybody's thrilled with that title it, it really resonates you know from nightmares to daydreams to future envisioning um it kind of encompasses the umbrella of what we're all talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I love how you work together with the artists. Like that feels like such a different process just to bring them in, in on even deciding the theme and the, and the name and yeah, I just even work together like that. <laughs> 
Me too. I mean, I mean, my whole um, trajectory, my whole process, my whole life has been about collaboration. And that's just my happy place. It's where, where I feel really comfortable. It's what I feel um, literally is going to save our planet and our world. And, you know, I think collaboration is, is literally the key to world peace. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. I feel like the fact that people aren't um, willing to or don't have the skills to collaborate is why we're in the place we're in right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you say collaboration, I think of sharing, sharing our stories. And when we come together and we share our stories, we're often so surprised that we have so much in common. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think about it um, in um, one of my really formative experiences was when I was working in a public school in Brooklyn and um, I became friends with the drama teacher and um, I was never a drama person. I was never a theater person. I was never an actor, um, but I collaborated with her on several productions of Shakespeare with young children. And it was like, it just blew my mind how um, theater people know how to collaborate yeah. and visual artists. We're kind of like in our own little space, you know, we didn't really know that. But if you look around, so much contemporary art is, is audience activated, meaning the art doesn't really start to be fully realized until the audience is part of it, um, either through just viewing or through doing things. Um, and that kind of art is just what really like lights me up. I love it. Me too. That's why we're doing this, because we found that common, that common love. Um, I can't wait to yeah. hear more about this process when you interview the artists. Um, yes. A couple more questions here before we wrap up. How were the artists chosen? Because I just feel like there's artists out there that are going to want to work in this kind of a collaborative group. And can you tell us more about how they Yeah. Well, it's funny. The artists kind of self-selected and came, like they approached me and, and it was, I'm, I was friends with, um, Two of them, you know, everybody kind of had, it's a small town here, kind of had some connections here and there. And um, when I said I wanted to curate, they were really happy because that artist, you know, it's like herding cats. It's like you've got five artists who just want to make their art, you know, and then they want to exhibit, but they don't really, you know, want to sort of figure out a venue. And I mean, they did want to, but they were very happy to hand that off to me um, to be sort of the coordinator person. But I will say, I didn't really know until I started doing this, I kind of backed into this as I have done all of my best jobs in my whole career. I didn't really know independent curation was a thing. Yeah. Like it, it's kind of, it's a thing. Like you can be an independent curator and just um, either find artists who you want to exhibit or work with, or people can find you and say, here's a venue, here's an idea. So I would just encourage anybody who's out there listening who is an artist or has an idea that they might enjoy curation, give it a go. I mean, put in a proposal, find someone to work with, start your collaboration. I love it. It feels so accessible. Um, just kind of back to what you were talking about. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know as an artist, you know, you just, you want to be in a gallery space or you want to get into a mu museum space because it feels like so important to your career, but it can be such a huge obstacle to get in somewhere. No, it's true. Yeah, yeah it's true. And I have to credit um, the curators at the, at the Missoula Art Museum. Brandon Ranches is the head curator, and he has been so generous with me um, as a mentor, as a colleague. And um, when I first arrived at MAM, you know, I was coming from the Guggenheim where it was like education was in the basement, and we never got access to curatorial. Like we got a walkthrough and that was it. There was no, I mean, it was very hierarchical. And um, at MAM, it's not like that at all. It's more like this, you know, it's like when cur curation, curatorial is looking at an exhibition, they want to hear from education, you know, how will we program it? How will we engage people with this? And it's a conversation. And that I think is something that does not happen at every museum and maybe it's more common in small museums i don't have enough experience to know but i do know that what happens at ma'am is really special i love it and i just love that we get to have you a part of our community me too <laughs> yeah. um me too what can we expect on instagram in the coming days um, yes so um 
as amazing as it is to hear from me, it's going to be more amazing to hear from the artists. So um, I'm really just here to set the stage of what's coming. And every week for the next five weeks, um, you're going to hear from each of the artists. I'm going to interview each of them asking basically the same sort of questions of everybody so that you'll get to see not only them as an artist, but also how they're all similar or different in their creative process. So we're hoping to really pull back the curtain a little bit and introduce the artists to everyone before the exhibition goes up. So it's a little bit backwards to how it's normally done, but who cares? <laughs> Everything's new now. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is kind of um, how you do an exhibition during the quarantine, which is something we didn't talk a lot about, but you know, we had a show planned for June 5th and um, that's still the plan. Yeah. But we definitely had a really traditional plan of a gallery opening and some educational opportunities for the artists to share live um, over the weekend. And we've had to just keep pivoting like the rest of the world to figure out how we can yes. continue continue this exhibition. So yeah, and luckily, yeah, luckily we're a creative community and this is literally what artists like train their whole lives for is like <laughs> dealing with the unexpected, dealing with the unknown, figuring out plan B, C, D down the line. Um, so yeah, I think actually this is going to be better than, than the traditional way. I agree. Well, thank you for meeting with, with me this morning over Zoom. Of um, course, and I just wanna give a shout out to Calico too, because when we first started um, this whole process, there was even conversation about where are we gonna exhibit this work? You know, we had no idea and, and Calico, I feel like came sailing in and like, we have a building, we have this amazing space and welcomed us. So we are super grateful and excited to be working with you both. Uh -huh, thank you. We're, we're excited too. Um, this is a dream come true. And I, I, love, I love sharing, you know, contemporary art with our community. Think they're ready for it yeah me too um can i close us out with a quote um one of my um favorite quotes is by a woman named elizabeth brown and she was is a curator of american art at the smithsonian and i i might not be able to remember it verbatim um, but i think it kind of addresses what's going on now and also our approach to art in this exhibition and it goes something like this um Art is not always about pretty things. It's about who we are, what happened to us, and and I can't remember the end of it, but like who we are and what happened to us, you know? And I feel like things are always happening to us, but now something has happened to all of us. And so just keeping in mind that, yeah, if you're out there making art, like it doesn't have to be pretty. A lot of what we're gonna be showing is not pretty, but it is about what happened to us. Oh, I love that. That's the perfect way to, to close out our talk. I love that. We'll put that quote up. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Alicia. Thanks, Jenny. We'll talk to you soon.